Now, let's let's change the question slightly. And I think this helps us understand, you know, Oratile's specific context um, because he's using his smartphone, right? And I think many people will be in the same situation. They can't afford to go and buy a fancy camera or even a decent extra camera, but smartphones, cameras have been increasing dramatically. So first question he's got there is, you know, is he setting himself up for failure? And the second question I would add to that is, you know, in your courses and in the community, are we going to have an aspect of teaching that focuses on people who are primarily using their phones to take images? Absolutely. Uh, no, I don't think you're setting yourself up for failure at all. Um, you, you're not. The, the best thing you can do is to go out of every opportunity and keep snapping pictures. I can share a little secret with you. I've often been next to Uncle Harry at the wedding. He gets better pictures than I do straight on the camera on the phone because in, you've then got to take your expensive camera images into Photoshop. The phone pictures are great. When you say overcompensate with editing, uh, I, w I would just, I, I, you don't want to overcook your image. You don't want it to look like it's been falsely edited. Uh, it will pop naturally, but you don't want to bring it up too much. You just keep shooting on your mobile device, uh, Photoshop mobile, there's Lightroom mobile, they're intended for this. Don't get fooled though by the, uh, and uh, I'm just, it just brought another thought into my head. Don't get fooled by Vodacom when they say they've got a hundred megapixel uh, Samsung smartphone out now. It's not necessarily all about the megapixel count. It's about the size of the image sensor. So when you buy a 150,000 Rand camera, your image sensor is this size. When you buy a 100 megapixel uh, cell phone, the sensor is still that size. It doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Keep shooting and we will take care of a mobile aspect to editing and to photography. Keep shooting. That's what you've got to do. Keep that passion going. You're never going to set yourself up for failure. Okay, Mike, and then just the other part of that question was, you know, in our courses and the community, can we and will we make sure that we're acknowledging that a lot of people will be using their smartphones for photography and that might then inform how we teach them the Photoshop and the Adobe skills in those products? Absolutely. And it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful point because at this point, uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't factored it in, but yeah, and it's going to come fresh off the press, but because we're almost there. But I'm going to add that in. Absolutely, that's a wonderful question. Yeah, I, I mean, I see it a lot, Mike. I mean, um, you know, and as you say, often, you know, in a wedding, when you're sitting in the second row right next to the bride, you've got the best vantage point, um, as opposed to the professional photographer who's coming in with their tripod or shooting it from the back, etc. So whether it's just because of the circumstance and the opportunity or the simple fact that somebody can't afford to buy another device, another camera, um, it would be great you know, if we can teach all these Adobe products and the skills for using those, but bearing in mind also that a lot of the original images are going to be coming from smartphones and how that might affect or inform or create opportunities uh, for for improving skills and uh, and working well with with smartphone photography. So Pam Pam agrees. A smartphone photography course sounds like a good idea. Uh, so we are definitely going to include this. I mean, I think, and that's why we have this webinar because we want to learn from the community what people want, and then meet those needs and continue to grow the community and um, and, and and experiment and do things that's going to be useful to people.